How are we doing here on the boat? Hmm. Holding up pretty good? I don't know. We had some storms on the VBS Mercy. But you know what I said about storms yesterday? When you're on a ship, it's good to read the Bible. Trust in God. He can serve you through any storm. Look at this. I want to teach you a verse for today. And I'll read it through, and then we'll, I want you to hear you say it as well. Psalm 1038. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Let's say it together, and then we'll, we'll look at it in a little more detail. You ready? Psalm 1038. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. I don't know if I heard you. Remember, the ocean is pretty loud. You got to be louder than the ocean. One more time. Psalm 1038. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Now, that's good. I could hear you over the ocean. This is amazing. Look at the Lord is merciful. If God wasn't merciful, then we would get what we deserve, and, and that's not good. He's gracious. He's, he is not mean. He's very kind, right? Slow to anger. If God was fast to anger, that would be over right away, if any little thing that we did. And plenteous in mercy, he's never going to run out of mercy. So that's an amazing blessing. Let's see if we can teach this to Salty. Let's see, where is Salty? Salty! Where are you? Oh, that doesn't sound wrong. Salty, what's... Where are you? Where's... Oh! Hey, Salty, what's wrong? What's wrong? Didn't you notice that terrible storm we just had? You know, the wind blowing and the waves crashing on the ship so hard that we almost sank? Well, yeah, it was hard to miss. That was a big storm. You don't know the half of it. You had it good. I did? Sure. You got to go down inside your cabin while the storm was so bad, but I have to ride it out way up there in the crow's nest. Wow, that must have been scary. I'll say it was scary. That was the worst storm I've ever sailed in. It was so bad, I was almost blown out of the crow's nest. Well, it wasn't that bad. You look like you, you made it all right. I'm not okay. My crackers are all soggy, my beautiful voice is hoarse and sore, and my feathers sure got ruffled. Well, I can tell you, they are a bit ruffled. Whew. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, our Bible verse today talks about anger. Really? Mm-hmm. Let me hear it. All right. Hey, sailors, let's say it for Salty. You ready? Psalm 1038. The Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Great verse, isn't it? I don't get it. Oh, the verse is all about God and how merciful he is. He's such a good and kind God. It takes an awful lot to make him angry. He's slow to anger and he has lots of mercy for everyone. Well, how about this? Why don't you say the verse? I don't know, but maybe the sailors can say it for me again. All right, Salty. We'll say it for you again. Let's say it for him again. Ready? Psalm 1038. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Humph. Oh, Salty, God is so merciful and slow to anger, it's a good idea that you and I are the same way when things don't go the way that we want. Yes, but it's so difficult. Well, how about this? I think you need to go to your crow's nest and pray about this verse. Let God's word work in your heart and we'll visit you tomorrow. Okay, I will. Okay. Well, it sounds like Salty has a lot of thinking to do, but let's just say the verse one more time to remember how good God is. Ready? Psalm 1038. The Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. We'll see you tomorrow, sailors.
night, Mr. Bob came to teach the lesson, and tonight it is going to be Mr. Armando, and his wife helped check you in tonight. Her name is Mrs. Carmen. But anyway, here's Mr. Armando. We say hello? Hello, a little bit louder? Hello? All right. There you go. I like that. So I want you guys a picture of this before we get started, okay? Have you, you guys ever been on a ship before or on a large boat or on a military ship or something like that? So there's always permission to come aboard. So I will ask permission to come aboard, and we will come aboard, and, uh, and we'll talk about some things here. It is a tight fit. So the ship, this ship is made out of wood, okay, the wood. Now, if you've ever been on a ship that has a, you know, that's made out of wood, you know that anything, even rain, a little bit of wind, will toss it about. And it's, it's kind of scary. If you've ever been in a storm out at sea, even on a large military ship, it's scary. Because the ocean, this ocean here at BBS is a mercy. And the ocean here, in this uh, passage that we're going to read and study, it represents people. So as vast as the ocean is, and as, as great depth that it has, and as vast as it is, it's, it represents people, because there's a lot of people. On a, on a ship, just imagine the ship captain standing behind the, the wheel here of his ship, and he's, he gets a passenger on board. This passenger, there was something strange about this passenger. He really didn't seem too happy to be, uh, be going in a different direction than what he first planned on doing. And it was the direction that God wanted him to go. So this passenger thought, well, I'm going to go on this ship that's going to a different place, and I'm going to ask the captain for permission to come aboard, and I'm going to pay my fare, and then I'm going to be on this ship, made of wood, and then cross this, this, uh, this vast sea that we are going to know that it's a vast sea of mercy. So as we get on this ship, right, and we, uh, we see uh, Jonah get on the ship, he seemed, uh, he seemed even a bit depressed. And then the, I, I truly do believe, and we'll hear from God's word, that the reason that he was seemed depressed was because he was disobedient to God. He was disobeying God directly. And he thought, well, I'll get on this ship made of wood, and I'll get on this ocean, which is a vast ocean, even representing all the people in the world, and even more, more probably more ocean than there are people. I would get on this ocean, and I would go out to sea, and hopefully God doesn't see me. He was, very, he was mistaken, because as, as he's, I'm traversing on this ship, and I'm crossing this ocean, the next thing you know, it's uh, the wave starting. The wave starting, the storm starting. And if uh, uh, there's nothing more scarier than being tossed about on a ship in a roaring ocean. For God it isn't, but for us it surely would be. And now we're being tossed about in this ocean. And the, the wood seems like it's going to fall apart. The, uh, the ship seem, seems like it's, it's going to sink. And it keeps getting worse. And it keeps getting worse. And Jonah was downstairs sleeping. Now I, as the captain of the ship, I, I pray to and I do sacrifices to false gods. The same, the same false gods that we all are, you know, familiar with. The same gods that we are told in this world, even as children, even as small as we are, here in this group, we're told about different types of gods. The gods of, of sports, the gods of money, the god of, of fame, the, all of these different types of, the god of doing wrong, the god of continuous disobedience. So we're, this, this captain, which was a nice guy, and he was a very uh, uh, popular captain, and he was very capable, 
could not withstand the force of God. They were, uh, they were thinking, what is going on here? What, I'm, I'm sacrificing things for, for these false gods, and nothing seems to work. Nothing seems to work. This ship is, is about to, to sink, and, and we're about to die, and, uh, and what is going on? So they, they remembered this man named Jonah that had just come on the ship and seemed very depressed, just like we all get when our hearts are, are hardened and we don't, uh, we don't listen and we don't obey. More importantly, disobedience to the word of God. They went downstairs and they sent Jonah. They woke him up. They send him up. The uh, Jonah represents disobedience. Do we all know what not you know disobedience is? Like not being obedient, right? So we we were not obedient. Jonah knew this, and that's why he was acting the way he did. So they roused him up. Yes, and we're we're getting there, and uh, and Jonah comes up. And they asked him, why don't you, because they knew that he believed in God and that he has served God in the prior, and he said, why don't you do a sacrifice to God? Well, what, is, what is going on? Why don't you, why aren't you, um, you know, helping us get through this? And Jonah basically told them that the reason that, uh, that this was happening was because his disobedience so God caused God to have everyone around him in a storm. And, uh, and that sea represents mercy, which God's mercy is as, as far as, as you can see and as deep as the deepest oceans and, and the, the, the greatest oceans in the world. God's mercy is even more than that. Jonah comes up and he says, well, throw me overboard. At first, they were very hesitant. You know, they hesitant means, you know, they were kind of scared to do that because throwing somebody overboard means that person is more than likely going to die. And then when they find out that it was us who threw them overboard, then that means that we were going to be in trouble with the police because we broke the law. We sent somebody to their, to their death, so to speak. Well, they... Uh, they cast Jonah out to sea. They out in the storm, and he was he was there, just flying through the air. And right before, as soon as he hit the water, and you know, you know, we all know when when we go swimming or something, when you when you go underneath the water, it kind of feels strange because we don't breathe under the water, right? We don't breathe under the water. As soon as uh, as soon as he came under. The big fish, as it was described, came up and swallowed him. Now, Jonah at first said, he, I'm sure that then he cried out to God as he was heading towards that water more than when this fish opened the door and, and fish his mouth. And the fish was described as a fish because there are fish big enough, even in, in lakes around here, that opened their mouth wide enough that probably could swallow maybe a, a small human being. But out in the ocean, there's fish that can swallow a full-grown man. So this fish swallowed Jonah. Now Jonah, at first, he said, well, he could breathe. So he was like, well, I might stand a chance here unless this fish just starts biting me and, and kills me that way. And then he was in his stomach, and then what happens is that Jonah then felt relief because as, as, I don't know, as unpleasant that it must be to be in a fish stomach, he, was, uh, he felt better because he could breathe and he was alive. As far as, as then, all of a sudden, he, Jonah was wondering, and I'm sure he prayed out to God like, like we do when we're in the middle of the storm and not even realizing that the reason that we are in that storm was because of our disobedience, 
our disobedience to others that care for us, our disobedience, more importantly than all that, is to God. And what happens is that then Jonah started wondering, how long am I going to stay here? How long is this going to happen? He could feel the, the, ship, the, the fish moving, and he would say, how long am I going to be here? Well, he was in there for about a 48-hour period, which is a one full day and, and part of the other one and another one. So three days, three days total. And those three days represent the, the death and the burial and then the resurrection in three days of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it was God was even showing him about salvation, even, even in the fish stomach. Because God will show us about salvation in all areas of our lives, no matter whether we're little or whether we're really old. God still shows us because he loves us so much that he always teaches us on how to be saved by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was three days in captivity, just like Jesus was when he died on the cross. And the great fish also represents um, a, a city, which is Babylon. And that all, all of God's lessons always have great representation for us. God doesn't just send down lessons to us just to to have something to teach. In every lesson, there's always, a, there's always a message of salvation. In every lesson that's, that's in, the, in the Word of God in the Bible. There's always a message and a path toward salvation. And um, we all know what salvation is, right? We all know, shake heads, salvation, right? I'm sure. And, and the ones that don't know, after, if you're interested, after, you know, when the pastor comes up and he, uh, he closes, then we can, we can certainly talk to you one-on-one -on -one or we can, uh, and we can um, certainly let you know how to be saved and what, what is actually salvation. So we'll, we'll, go on that, uh, we'll go on that later. A great fish. There's a... Uh, a great, uh, great illustration, a great fish. So I just want you to, to think what disobedience did at the start. You're tossed overboard, and all of a sudden as you hit the water and you say, well, I'm not going to be able to breathe in this, a great fish comes and swallows you. And I, I can't, even, can't even imagine that. A great fish swallows you, and you're in the stomach. And all of this, all of this signifies disobedience. All of it. There is no other, there is no other uh, cause for all of this to be happening to Jonah. God sent him, because he was a great preacher, God sent him to a place where he didn't want to be. God spoke to, spoke to him in his word and sent him. He didn't want to go. So Jonah said, well, I'm not, I'm not going to go. I'm going to disobey. And then I'm going to hide. We can't hide from God. God, uh, God sees everything, which is a good thing, which is a great thing. We might think, well, I I'm, I'm, I'm don't want to do this, and I don't want to do that, and, and I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to follow God's rules, and I don't want to... You know, I don't want to listen. I just want to, want to disobey. What happens in that is, is that we have an all-seeing God, and he sees everything at all times. You might think, well, this is not a, this is not a good thing. You know, this is not a good thing, because once in a while, I would like to disobey and don't have anybody know. And this way, I can just get away with things, and I can just go on my life, and, you know, my father won't know, my mother won't know, you know, <clears throat> my teacher doesn't know. No one knows. It's actually pretty good to get away with things. 
but the, the, the big problem is, is that God sees everything, all the time, everywhere. So you would say, well, that's a problem. But is it a problem? It's not a problem. It actually is a great blessing. Because just how God sees me, me being disobedient, he also sees me in my time of great, great need for his help. In my time where, where I might feel lonely and I might feel um, tired and I might feel scared and I might feel that I'm in a storm just like they were and that I have no one to help me and I might be in, 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 my, in my room thinking, <clears throat> what is this about? What, what, why do I feel this way? How can I get any help for all of these things that are happening to me as I'm growing up, as I'm, as I'm a child? How, who's who's going to help me? I don't want to, you know, talk to anyone about this. We, we serve an all-seeing God, and we have an all-seeing God. So th- this God sees all the bad and the disobedience and the things that, that we do wrong, but he also sees us in great times of help. That sometimes all we got to do is set our, set our eyes upon him and just put up our hands and ask for help. And he sees us. He sees us all the time. In the darkness of a storm, in our everyday life. And, and for that great gratitude is where we come through faith. That that. Great gratitude. And it's, a, and it's the ocean represents a God of mercy. As we've been, uh, we've been studying here, we have it up there. VBS Mercy is the name of our ship here. The ocean represents mercy. And God's mercy is vast. It carries, it, it, it carries a, a greater dimension that we could ever, that we could ever think of. If you've ever been on the ocean, just on the beach, and you stand there in the sand, you look out to the ocean where the waves are coming in, and you're like looking out there, and basically all you see is ocean as far, as far off as the eye can see. And when you're on a ship, it doesn't matter what size. A, one of those military aircraft carrier, when you're out in the ocean, it looks small. And when you look out, from, the, from that aircraft carrier, which is a vast, huge ship, when you look out, all you see is ocean. That represents God's mercy. It's vast, is is, is is great, and it is everywhere. And it is for us, as we have a fellowship with, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we have a fellowship. As we confess our sins, he forgives us our sins. As we, we have a relationship with him through faith of his shed blood on that cross, we have a God that sees everything, that is everywhere, and that protects us and corrects us in love. There's always a form of correction. When we are disobedient and we feel that we feel that great turmoil, and we feel that, you know, we look at, we look at ourselves in, in, in just, just not, we're not happy. And that is, that is the Holy Spirit teaching us due to God's seeing of all and of everything. And uh, I, I just, um, don't try to hide. That's, uh, that goes for when you're real little or when you're, like I said, as old as you, as you uh, are. Even Jonah's or that old ship captain that was up there a little while ago. It, it doesn't matter. Don't try to hide. We're, a, we're sinners. We're born sinners. We're sinners. We are all sinners. And sin will be punished according to Bible scripture, that sin will be punished. It might not be punished right away as getting tossed from a ship in the ocean and getting swallowed by a, a large fish. 
I mean, it's kind of, I, I don't know, is it, being in a fish stomach cannot be the most pleasant thing. You know, the fish, they swallow a lot of things and, uh, and digest a lot of stuff out there in the ocean. But the sin will be punished in some way. But the beauty of this, the most beautiful thing that was ever given to us is that Jesus took our punishment. He took all our punishment. He took our punishment from, from all the minor and the major sins and the dis disobedience and all, we, the, all of that comes true through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and having faith in that shed blood and living, in that, living with that faith, confessing your sins, and Jesus took our punishment. And there's nothing to be freer in this life than that. And, um, and that I'll, I'll turn it over to the pastor. And we, um, we're, uh, we learn and hopefully we'll keep uh, learning about, about Jonah. Fascinating story. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Armando. Hey, let me tell you something, boys and girls. You are doing a great job. I appreciate you listening, paying attention, watching whoever's teaching or whatever. So a couple things I wanted to just review with you. So we've learned different things about Jonah. But a big thing to learn about Jonah is God said, go that direction. And Jonah went that direction. And whenever God tells us to do something, we have a choice. We can either say, okay, I'll go. Or we can say, no, I don't think so. Jonah went the wrong direction. And he thought he was getting away from God. We've heard don't hide from God. But he tried. He's smart. He was a man. He was a prophet. But he tried to hide from God. We are all tempted to act like we're doing okay. God said, go that direction. Jonah went the other direction. And God said, I've got you. I know exactly where you are. And that's why he sent this storm. Let me read to you. Here's what the Bible says. Did you know the Bible is what God says? You ever wonder what God thinks or what God says? Just read the Bible. Here you go. Here's a verse. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Our brother was talking about the aircraft carrier and how big that is. That's bigger than this building. We're talking about really big boats. But with this ship, that boat and that storm was so bad they thought it was going to break apart that's why our brother was saying it. it's a wooden ship they thought it was going to break apart they thought it was going to just be destroyed what would happen to everybody on that ship if the ship broke apart they'd all go down they'd all go down right they'd all go down they'd sink yeah yeah and when they'd sink they would die listen to this listen to another verse here's what god said then were the men exceedingly afraid. These are not little boys and girls. These are men. These are big men who had lived on the sea. They knew about the winds. They knew about the sea. They knew about the waves. They knew how to swim. They knew how to take care of a ship. They knew how to guide the ship and how to use the winds. Those men, strong, tough, big men were exceedingly afraid. And so was Jonah. And then what happened? They threw him overboard. Now think with me. Can you imagine being in this huge ocean and being thrown into the ocean? They didn't throw him out one of those life preservers. They threw him into the ocean. What happened when they threw him into the ocean? Yeah, but before the fish. What happened when they threw him in the ocean? So here's this huge, yeah, good, good question. They, they, they had all of these waves. They had all this wind. It was so bad that the men were scared to death. Listen to what happened the very moment Jonah went into the water. Listen to what God says. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. The Bible says that God said, Jonah, you go that direction. And Jonah said, no, I'm going to go that direction. When he went that direction, God sent a huge storm. And when 
all the people on the ship picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, immediately the storm ceased. It stopped. It stopped. It was just calm. Why? Because God had Jonah exactly where he wanted him. And we mentioned last night, God made that sea and God made that storm and God made that fish and God had that fish in the right place. Aren't you glad? We're glad that that fish wasn't a mile away. By the time he swam that far, Jonah would have been drowned. Biggest fish, right place at the right time. And then, what do you think everybody on the ship did? You ever think about that? So here's this massive storm. They're scared to death. They're so scared that they throw this guy over, apparently, to, to, to die. Immediately, the, the, the waves just were nice and calm. There was no storm anymore. What do you think the guys did then? Listen to this. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. Now, here's a great lesson to learn. <coughs> Big storms, like, my look for a moment. Look at, look at the trees out there where you guys were. Look at the wind out there. It's a huge storm coming. Hopefully, oh, it won't get back. I had a text while we are here from Dominion saying, bad storms, you might lose your power. So I'm praying and hoping you will too. That we'll keep, we'll keep okay for another 40 minutes. That'll be great. But here's the thing. These men were afraid twice. Why were they afraid the first time? Who remembers? Me, 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 me. What's the answer? They're afraid because of the storm. They were even more afraid later. Why are they afraid the second time? This is the thing to learn. They were afraid of the storm. Any of us can be afraid of the storm. But only some people are afraid like they were the second time. Because the second time, they were afraid of the Lord. You ever think about that? You see, God made the storm. That means God's way bigger than the storm. And God made the fish. That means God's way bigger than the fish. And God's way bigger than you, and God's way bigger than me, and God's way bigger than all of us. Have you ever been afraid of the Lord? The Bible says we should fear the Lord. We should revere the Lord. We should worship the Lord. Not because he's a bully. We should fear the Lord because we are told to go one direction and we go the other and we please ourselves. The good news that we're learning this week is that even though God judges all sin, God is merciful. What is mercy? Mercy is when we say, I'm wrong, but God be merciful to me. I have failed, but God be merciful to me. And, and you can do that even tonight. So we're going to pray in just a moment and uh, give you the opportunity. Maybe some of you would like to pray. Some of you might want to talk to the Lord. You can talk to your teachers, but we'll give you an opportunity right now if you'd like to make a decision and, uh, and talk to somebody about it, okay? Let's bow our heads together. You can pray. Just pray quietly. You can all pray. But we'll close our eyes now, okay? The Lord has brought you here to hear the Bible, and Mr. Armando did a wonderful job teaching us. But how is it between you and God? Have you ever talked to God? Have you ever told him, Lord, I do not want to face you with my sin. I'm afraid of that. Have you ever told him, Lord, I'm afraid of this big storm, or I'm afraid of the dark, or I'm afraid of standing before you as my judge? I'm afraid of dying. There's all kinds of things to be afraid of. Listen, God is bigger than all of it. He can take care of us, but we have to trust him. I wonder tonight if you would say, I want to pray about that, and I'd like to talk to somebody about it. You have your teachers. You have me and my wife and all the adults here. Basically, all the adults I think you could talk to. So I want to encourage you to do that. We're going to pray, and then we'll have our review time. Our Father in heaven, 
We're so grateful tonight for Jesus who took the punishment we deserved so that we could enjoy your mercy. And I pray for each of these boys and girls. They've sat quietly. They've listened carefully. I pray that they would think about the fish and think about the storm and think about Jonah and think about the boat. Think about all those things, but may every single one of those things point them to you. You're bigger than all of it. I pray that you'd help us to be a blessing to these young people and the word of God would take root in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Mrs. Jennifer is going to come and uh, do some memory work. Okay, Mr. Armande did a really good job, didn't he? Really good. Okay, we're going to do a song before we review our memory verses. So we're going to do a song called, Do You Know My Jesus? And we did it last night, but we're going to learn a new verse to go to it, but it goes right along with what Pastor was just talking about. So let's look at the words of it before we sing it. So it says, Do you know my Jesus? Do you know my Lord? Do you read your Bible and believe God's word? Does anybody in here ever read their Bible? Raise your, raise your hand if you ever read your Bible. Yeah, that's super important. You can read two at once. It's amazing. <laughs> but that's a super important thing to do. Maybe not two at once, but to read your one Bible and open it up. Okay. But to read your Bible and look at God's word and see what he's telling you. That is great. And then it says, does the Holy Spirit all your life control? Do you know my Jesus? Has he made you whole? Now, that was the first verse that we sang last night. But now there's a second verse that goes with it, too. So here it is. Do you know my Jesus? Do you know my Lord? Have you life eternal through his wondrous word? That means, are you going to live forever with Jesus because you're saved, because you've trusted him as your Savior? Are your sins, though many, cleansed and washed away? That's because Jesus washes away your sins. When you become saved, when you trust him, he washes away all your sins. It says, Do you know my Jesus? Is he yours today? That's the perfect song to go right after what Mr. Armando and Pastor were just talking about. So let's sing that right now. has put it has put our Bible school time up on the church website so you can see it and whatever goes in this microphone gets heard on the thing so you can hear it later and if it's my voice you hear it's just hearing me all the time but if I turn it this way then you can be on the website so I'm going to try to do that so that you can hear everybody singing all right so we'll try it yeah okay here we go one more time
Okay, let's do another one. Let's do. Oh, oh, let's do our verse. Sorry, let's review yesterday's verse. Who can raise their hand and tell me what yesterday's verse was? Ooh, Maddie. Ninety-eight, wasn't it? No. Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. You were right. Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. One. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Let's all say it together. That's right. Let's all say it together. Ready? Psalm eighty-nine. One. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Good. Now we're going to do tonight's verse. Does. Before we put it up there, does anybody know what it is? Haha, <laughs> we might have cheated, sorry. <laughs> oh, I see one. Go ahead. Um, oh, tell me your name again. Zachary. Go ahead. Oh, nope, not that one. The one for tonight. Do you remember? Do you want a hint? What is it? The one is... Um, Psalm 103, 1. Do you remember that? Oh, you got help, I see. <laughs> the 10? Eight. I don't know. I'm coming up with <laughs> Eight. Psalm 103, 8. So sorry. Okay, go ahead. Do you know it? Okay. Did anybody know it? Does anybody have it memorized that knows it? Do you think you know? Anthony, do you want to try it? Anybody else? Oh. Wait a second, just hold on. Mm -hmm. Flow to anger and. I even read it. Plenty, plenty of sin mercy, right? The end. Okay. So he got it. He really did get it. Okay, let's see if we can all say it together. I see Kyle's got his hand up too. Here it is up on the screen. You ready? Psalm 1038. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. I don't know what I was thinking with the one there. No idea. I'm memorizing another verse in front of you. Okay, so let's do um, Together We'll Serve the Lord. We did that one last night. That's the fun one that says, if we take your faith and my faith and put them all together. Remember that one? We're going to try that one. That's fun. And we're going to go a little faster tonight. So there you go. Alphabetical, 
circle again, right? Yeah. Yes. F comes before C. <laughs> and you can even say. No, that's not true. A comes. Well, A comes very first, right? Yeah. But F, if you think of this too, you could say F is first. That's another way you can think of it, right? No. F is first. Yes. So let's try the new yes. word. A. What well, A is first. So it's just stop. All right, let's try it one more time. No words. Okay, we're going to go to our classes. So let's do it backwards tonight. Okay. Let's do the big kids first. So Lillian's row can go first. Oh, Miss Lillian, who's teaching the big kids. So you guys go with her on over. <laughs> 